What's up guys, we are back with another review, taking a look at something a little bit different today and a new line from the folks over at Boss Fight Studio. We're taking a look at the Power Stars line, which if you've if you've already noticed is a little bit of an homage to Kenner Superpower stuff. Although of course this is not a DC character, we're taking a look at Flash Gordon and related characters. So, you know, think of things like Ming the Merciless or the Phantom, stuff like that. So King Features, basically. Now, these are the first wave, and we've got four figures to talk about here. So we've got uh, the man himself, we've got Flash Gordon, we've got uh, Prince Thun, we've got, of course, like I mentioned, Ming the Merciless, which is probably the most anticipated one for me when I knew these were coming out, because he's... He's just cool. He's got a killer design. And, as I mentioned, it's not just Flash Gordon. Uh, we do have the Phantom himself. Now, like I mentioned, these are very much in like a Kenner Superpowers kind of style, uh, kind of aesthetic and homage in some ways. And, of course, a lot of that comes through with the with the card art and just the styling of things. So the figures do come on a, on a classic, you know, card back style of packaging. So figure in the bubble, you've got the Power Stars logo, you've got that sort of diagonal burst across the front with the character's name and then an action shot of the figure or the character rather. And then the back gives us more of those logos for the figure, for the Power Stars line, the action shot, a bio for that specific character, as well as a cross sell for the rest of wave one. So let's do it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package, our Boss Fight Studio Power Stars figures. So this, of course, being the first assortment in this retro themed line. So again, you know, very Kenner superpowers inspired, you know, as if these figures were made in that time period in the 80s. And there is, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Not, not the first of which is the fact that we are in this weird era of toys where this stuff is being made now. It still boggles my mind that we are getting any kind of Flash Gordon anything, really. Not to mention Phantom stuff and even, you know, more, I don't want to say deep cuts, uh, but we're getting, you know, not just Flash and not just Ming. Uh, they're going to kind of go a little bit deeper with that. And I think this is a pretty cool idea because... Generally speaking, a lot of retro style figures are three and three quarter. This is not that. They are, they're a little bit different. They're still very retro and they're a certain kind of retro. So in that vein, let's see what these guys can do. See how they move around. Now they're basically all the same. So as far as moving these guys around, you know, it's a retro style figure again. So the name of the game, at least as far as I'm concerned, is form over function. They have minimal articulation. I think that's to be expected. So we've got a head that is on a ball. It can look up slightly. Looks down really nice, though. Tilt side to side. You know, a little attitude on him. Full rotation there. Arms swivel at the shoulders. The legs kick forward and backward. And then you've got a knee with about 90 degree bend and some swivel there. Of course, it swivels more when it's hinged and then when it's not, just due to the cut of that knee. And that's about it. Uh, they are, of course, just retro style figures, but they're not just the three and three quarter five POA. They have a slight bit more, but if you're familiar with this form factor, it's, it's going to be nothing new to you. They are very much a product of the time period that boss fight is going for here. Of course, like I mentioned, you know, the name of the game is the style, the form, the overall look and feel of these figures is far more important to me than the fact that they can swivel their arms and they can bend their knees. That's fine, that's great, but it's all about the look and kind of, you know, reimagining these characters in this era of action figure. So, starting with Flash, I can tell you right off the bat that if you're into this kind of toy, and I know, I know these aren't for everyone, they definitely aren't, this isn't something that everybody grew up with, this isn't something that everybody has nostalgia for, but they're pretty solid figures, and I think they all look pretty great. Uh, they all have a decent amount of paint on them, and just overall the sculpt is really, I don't know, evocative of, of that era in many ways. I think Flash looks tremendous. You know, there's not a lot to say about these figures. Frankly, they look great, and they move pretty well, and they very much do what they set out to do. If you're into this style of figure, you're probably going to like these. Well, of course, if you like Flash Gordon, if you like the Phantom, but they've got a good sculpt. The head on Flash in particular is pretty tremendous. I love this sort of cocky, smarmy expression that he's got. Uh, the little power cummerbund thing that he's got for his belt is really well painted. I always love that. I think it's just ridiculous and goofy looking. Colors are saturated, bright, and vibrant, or dark and saturated in the case of his pants and, of course, those boots. He does come with a few accessories, so we get the sword in a nice silver metallic. And he's got a sheath for it, which, of course, I always love weapon storage. 
And then he's also got a holster for his silver uh, blaster. But he also includes an accessory that no other figure in this wave has. He comes with an extra head sculpt. This is a headgearless head sculpt. And it has a little bit more of a cocky uh, expression, you know, a little bit cockier, a little bit smarmy in some ways. So you've got, you know, everything exposed. You can see his ears, windswept hair. You've got the eyebrows going out, the whole thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I don't necessarily know that I'm not going to use this head sculpt. But I always like to have extras. I always like the inclusions and just the ability to, to change up a figure. Now we've got our, our Lion Man Prince, the Prince of the Lion Men, and I think he looks pretty solid. He is, of course, a very different kind of figure because he is, well, he's mostly naked, and all he has is his tattered, tattered loincloth, which has definitely seen better days. He does have his tail, so of course maybe if you didn't know he was supposed to be this sort of Lion Man thing, uh, you wouldn't because he still kind of looks just like a dude. But he's got the tail with a little bushy fur on it. I don't know if this is supposed to move or not because it doesn't really want to. And I'm not stressing it. He does look a little bit different from the other figures. And that's because he is a little bit different. He has a more barrel chested uh, type of build. Kind of a larger torso in many ways. But he's still very similar to them. Clawed toes, so no boots on him. And then he's got his fully painted head with the hair, with that big mane, with the bushy beard, and this nice scowl. He's definitely a very unique figure, especially in comparison to the rest of this wave. He does include a weapon. Uh, he's got his sort of, just sort of a standard sword. So it's basically just your regular sword with a, with a wrap grip on it, but more of that silver metallic, you know, you know, kind of a retro aesthetic there as well. So I'm pretty happy with him. And then we've got our Phantom, and I know the Phantom is a favorite for a lot of folks, I will usually, like, sort of lend myself towards the, the Flash Gordon side of this stuff. But this is a pretty sweet Phantom. The purple on him is super rich, is the word I want to say. And I do love a Phantom that has the goofy blue and black trunks because, well, frankly, I don't get it. And I think it's ridiculous and it's weird, but, but I like seeing it on a figure. He's got his skull belt buckle. He's got his two pistols. They're done up in the silver metallic also. And his hands do have the rings on them. So if you don't want to use the guns, you can go ring style. And then we've got this really, really stoic head sculpt, which obviously makes perfect sense for this guy. So you've got the fully encapsulated head with the, you know, the purple headgear on there, black mask with the white eyes, and just this sort of no-nonsense expression on him. And I think he looks pretty fantastic. He's, he's kind of basic in that regard. And I'm not saying basic in a, in a negative way. He's just sort of not as gaudy as Flash, I suppose. But... With, without any surprise, really, the star of this, this wave, the show, the whole deal is, is and was always going to be Ming. Because frankly, if you can't do Ming, the whole wave is going to fall apart for me. Pretty much any version, any era, any style of Ming the Merciless is always going to be the cool version uh, of, of any figure in the wave. And I think they, they did a really solid job here. He has a lot of deco on him. Uh, he is very detailed. He includes... A soft goods cape, which I'm always happy with. You know, this is a very retro style cape. It just sort of cinches around the neck. So it doesn't actually like peg on or get clasped on or anything. It just sort of cinches around the neck with a little, uh, like a clip almost is the best way for me to say it. But it looks really good and it does hold in place really well. But you can also take it off if you want. Uh, he does have a really nice deco hits though. The gold metallic sort of foil look on his torso looks really great. Shines well under, under pretty good lighting. So you can see it sort of just glisten there. His power cummerbund looks great. That green is super striking, especially in contrast to the red. And he has a red sheath and a red holster for his accessories, which we'll talk about in a second. But his overall color scheme, I think, is tremendous. That sort of lavender and the maroon purpley color we've got is just kind of ridiculous, really, because he doesn't exactly look menacing in that getup, but at the same time, he does. So you've got, you know, this guy with, like, these purpley pink gloves and he's going to take over your planet. But I think they look I think they look pretty fantastic on him and he looks tremendous. I'm really happy with him. He's he's certainly the star of the wave. There's there's no doubt about it. Head sculpt is really fantastic. That scowl, the beard, those crazy eyebrows, the whole deal. Uh, really happy with him. And then he does include a few uh, accessories also. So he's got the the gold gun in comparison to Flash's silver and then he has a gold sort of cutlassy style sword and this is all very metallic also so visually i mean i think they nailed the style i think i think they did a really solid job with these and ultimately they lend themselves very very well to this era of retro style figure so yeah overall you know again overall i think i think boss fight really nailed these and 
like I said, this is not going to be a thing for everybody, obviously. You know, not everybody grew up with, with this kind of figure. Not everybody has nostalgia for this kind of figure. And retro figures aren't always for everybody either in general. But if you like Flash Gordon stuff, if you like the Phantom, and you're into this era of toy, well, this might be right up your alley because they did a really solid job here. They move well. I mean, again, they're minimally articulated, but they move well for what they have. They look fantastic, though. I'm really happy with that. Paint is all very clean, all very crisp. The details are all there. Head sculpts are great. Ming, I mean, I'm going to say it again, Ming is the star of the way for me. Soft goods, crazy deco, goofy outfit, really fantastic accessories across the board. I'm just really happy with these guys. And, of course, they come on some very, very vintage inspired card backs which always does it for me as well. So that's going to do it for this look at the Boss Fight Studio Power Stars Wave 1. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.